A student ate 108 gummy antacids for breakfast. This is what happened to her kidneys. JT is a 22-year-old woman presenting to the emergency room, confused. Doctors held up two fingers and asked her how many they were holding up, and she responded, 11. When JT was in high school, something really terrible happened to her. She always had some stomach pain as a kid. Her parents thought it was heartburn from all the spicy food that she would eat. She'd eat a whole bag of hot chips and lie about it, blaming it all on her brother. But as time went on, her stomach pain kept getting worse. One day, JT went to the bathroom after breakfast and emptied her stomach into the toilet. It wasn't just breakfast that came up, it was blood everywhere. In the emergency room, doctors sent a camera down her throat to look inside her stomach, and they found a giant ulcer. Doctors took a sample of it and determined that this was caused by bacteria that shouldn't have been there. Ulcers are kind of like those sores that you get in your mouth, but they're in your stomach. And the stomach has acid, which aggravates the ulcer, making things hurt more and more. The ulcer can dig deeper into the lining of the stomach like it did for JT causing a bleed, explaining her hematemesis. JT's parents knew for sure. Those spicy foods and hot chips that she wouldn't stop eating caused the ulcer. They argued with doctors who knew this was caused by bacteria. The spicy foods made things worse, but those spicy foods were not the cause. Doctors instructed her to stop eating that food. Her parents were on board with that. Doctors gave her antibiotics to kill the bacteria and medicines to control her stomach acid, and everything seemed to be okay. JT was sent home, and she was feeling great. But a week later, JT's personality started to shift. Every morning when she woke up, she struggled with terrible and dark thoughts. She would have random panic attacks where she felt like she couldn't breathe. At nighttime, she would have the awful feeling that she wasn't going to make it. She became a completely different person. Her parents didn't understand what was happening to her, but it was absolutely the doctor's fault. When they demanded an answer, the doctor said, you know, she's 17 and going through puberty. Of course, she's gonna change. But she JT's parents argued back. The doctor's poisonous medicines were absolutely causing this, destroying their daughter's life, and they weren't going to take it. Antibiotics can change the gut microbiome, which is the bacteria living in the stomach and the intestines. More and more research suggests that this bacteria could have some impact on the brain, so killing them with antibiotics taken by mouth could change some balance in the body. This is rare, but it might be a real reaction to the medicines, the doctors thought. So they wrote her a prescription for a different antibiotic, but JT and her parents had had enough. Their truth was that the spicy food alone was causing all of this, and so they threw the antibiotics in the trash. As the weeks and months passed, JT's personality slowly reverted back to normal. She turned to herbal supplements to help calm and cool her body down. Occasionally, her stomach would hurt, but all of this seemed to pass. The bleeding ulcer and the resulting personality change was the terrible thing that happened in high school. In her senior year of college now, the pharmacy where JT got her herbal supplements was out of stock. She knew from past experience that antacids like Tums and Alka-Seltzer would help. She felt like her ulcer never really went away. Maybe she had grown out of the pain or she had gotten used to it, but she still needed something to neutralize her stomach acid and live pain free. JT found new gummy antacids. Why not try it out, she thought. Regular chewy tablets were chalky. She didn't like that texture, so she bought some of the bottles of the gummies and started eating them. At first, she would just have a few in the morning with breakfast, but as the days passed, those gummy antacids became her breakfast. She noticed the more gummies that she ate, the more spicy foods she could have. Finally, I can eat the food that I want to eat, she thought. Antacids are usually made of calcium carbonate. It neutralizes stomach acid and closes up the part of the stomach where it connects to the esophagus, helping with heartburn. Someone on the internet said that calcium was good, especially for women, to help build up the bones, preventing osteoporosis. So not only was JT healing her stomach, she was strengthening her bones too she thought, and everything was good. This was the best that she had felt in years, but then strange things started to happen. She would notice that she would urinate at least two times an hour throughout the day to the point where she had no idea where that water was coming from. But then things started spiraling out of control. One morning, she woke up at 7 a.m. When she was done brushing her teeth, it was one in the afternoon. 
She had no idea how she brushed her teeth for six hours, but things kept getting worse. One morning, JT tried to get out of bed, but her knees felt weak. She sat at the computer watching a class lecture while eating her gummy antacid breakfast. She didn't realize that she had eaten two whole bottles totaling 108 gummies. In the bathroom now, dizzy. JT fell down before emptying her stomach into the toilet as she calls for 911, and she's brought to the emergency room where we are now. At examination, doctors knew something was wrong. Her reflexes were weak. When they asked her who is the current president, she said Abraham Lincoln. And when they asked her what is meant by the phrase, don't put all your eggs in one basket, she stared off into space before responding, I like turtles. Clearly, JT has something wrong with her brain due to the fact that she just ate 108 gummy antacids for breakfast, but doctors don't know that. She isn't in a mental state where she could tell them that even if they asked. A scan of her brain looked fine. It didn't seem like anything was wrong just from the picture, but as she sat in the emergency room waiting for the doctors, she emptied her stomach again onto her patient gown and had two more seizures before she was sent to the intensive care unit where a blood test reveals that JT has hypercalcemia. Hyper meaning high. Calci referring to calcium, an important mineral and electrolyte in the body, and emia meaning presence in blood high calcium presence in blood. If she ate 108 calcium carbonate gummies and had been eating almost a bottle every day, this makes sense why she would have high calcium presence in blood, but in the intensive care unit, no one knows this is what happened. Doctors do additional tests. The calcium is so high in her blood, it's life-threatening. And something that high doesn't happen on its own. In the body, the bones are the largest stores of calcium. Doctors need to make sure that her bones aren't dissolving in her body, leaking calcium everywhere. This can happen because of a hormone imbalance or because of a tumor somewhere. As the doctors await the test results, they find that JT is not only dehydrated, but that her kidneys have started shutting down. But what does this have to do with gummy antacids? How is this even remotely related to calcium carbonate? You see, the body, especially the nerves and the muscles, use electricity to send signals. Electricity is like the plus and minus sign that you see on batteries, and calcium has a plus two charge. If there's high calcium presence in blood, the calcium tends to block signals going into the cells. If the nerves and the muscles rely on electricity to signal and do things, then if too much calcium is around blocking those signals, then that explains why JT is weak, and why her brain can't signal for her to speak coherently before shutting everything down and she started having seizures. But this isn't her only problem. In the kidneys, urine is produced by manipulating sodium, because wherever sodium is, water will flow towards it. In this small science experiment, I dissolve salt in this water and place it into a semi-permeable tube, meaning that only water can move in and out of it. I place the tube in a pool of distilled water, and you'll see that water flows towards the sodium. That water flows towards where there's salt. When urine is being made, the kidneys rely on electricity, balancing plus and minus charges. Sodium is a plus one charge, and the kidneys do everything that they can to hold onto enough sodium to retain water so that the person doesn't become dehydrated. When too much calcium is present, it stops the kidneys from holding on to any sodium, so everything becomes urine, causing massive water loss. This is why JT couldn't stop urinating during those days where she was eating gummy antacids like candy. But it's still not over yet. The blood is a soup of several chemicals. Calcium has a tendency to make solid salts. So big chemicals like phosphate and oxalate, which you eat in your diet, have negative charges and they attract to calcium. They grow in size, creating solids that collect in the kidneys as stones form, blocking flow and pointing to permanent damage in JT's case. All of this is called milk alkali syndrome. Ulcers aren't uncommon and they're not new. Humans have had them for thousands of years. In the early 1900s, doctors thought maybe it was stomach acid flaring up that would keep irritating the ulcer, preventing it from healing. Neutralizing that acid with milk and cream given once an hour and then giving baking soda allowed patients to heal from all of this. This milk alkali therapy became the way to treat ulcers. But very quickly, doctors realized that doing this was toxic in humans because of the hypercalcemia from the milk and the alkalemia, 
alkaline, opposite of an acid, presence in blood from the baking soda. Milk alkali syndrome decreased in incidence throughout the 1970s because we had newer medicines that could better control how the stomach produces acid. But what's forgotten becomes new again, as more recently in the 2010s, people are more often self-medicating for various stomach ailments with over-the-counter calcium carbonate. Which is fine, but don't take more than what the label says, because hypercalcemia can happen quickly, and these are not candy, no matter how good they taste. If JT's problem is all caused by hypercalcemia, there isn't a way to suck the calcium directly out of her blood. The only real route out is through the kidneys. If they're shutting down, the only way to do this now is to rehydrate her and get water flowing back through her kidneys. Additional medicines were given to force her kidneys to excrete calcium into the urine as her blood calcium levels started to decrease over days. As JT regains consciousness, she's confused because she has no idea why she's in the hospital. When the doctors walk into her room, they talk to her and they ask her what she knows about eating antacids, and her eyes immediately light up as she explains that those gummies saved her from the ulcer and enabled her to eat all the foods that she loved. She didn't realize that eating them like candy is the reason why she's in the hospital in the first place. At discharge, doctors were able to warn her the life-threatening dangers of eating more than just a couple gummy antacids. They were able to advise her on non-excessive stomach ulcer treatment. But with a severe episode of hypercalcemia like this, after eating 108 gummy antacids for breakfast, her permanent kidney damage put her on dialysis as she was not able to make a full recovery. Thanks so much for watching. Take care of yourself and be well.